Hey everyone, this is Nick from Mecca Warehouse, and today we're back with weekly update number 45. Uh, numbers are cranking on up. We're getting to almost a year of this, which is uh, kind of insane. We'll be seeing that sometime in uh, October, probably. But with that said, let's uh, get into it and uh, talk about everything. So first segment's usually week in review. This is where I talk about what's been going on this week, things that are coming up, things like that. And uh, I think we've got some really exciting things to talk about this time. Uh, but before I talk about the exciting stuff, though, I uh, just want to throw out there that Labor Day, uh, which is Monday the 6th, I think, September 6th, we will not be open for local pickup. Uh, I don't believe UPS picks up on Labor Day. I believe they're closed. And uh, with that being the case, we won't be here either. Uh, it's a good chance to, to get away, spend some time with my family, and kind of recoup and recover a little bit. Next week's going to be hell because of it. But it, uh, it's a good time to do that since it won't really affect our shipping uh, for the most part unless we get slammed to the orders this weekend, which is possible, I suppose. Uh, also, the other just boilerplate uh, thing that's been going on, uh, our vlog number two was released on Tuesday. Uh, it was kind of funny. I uh, I posted it as a premiere and I screwed up big time with the timing. So it actually played 12 hours before I planned on it. And I ended up taking it down so we could still do the premiere at the correct time. But some people might have saw it at that midnight time. If you did, uh, first of all, you're welcome. Because I've heard from some people that were there that they were really appreciative of it premiering when they could watch it. Uh, but I'm sorry I wasn't able to be there. The intent was for it to be at noontime, not at midnight. I woke up to, you know, some comments and some messages about it being uh, live on there, and that was definitely not my plan. Uh, we'll be kind of playing with premiere times for things like the vlog going forward, I'm trying to figure out what that sweet spot is for when people can watch it right when it's uh, published. The first one was 10.30, like when we usually post our videos, a little bit too early for West Coast people. The, uh, this one was at noontime, which I figure at least East Coast might be starting at lunchtime around then, which is perhaps better. Uh, but maybe it needs to be in the afternoon after most people are out of work or in the evening. And uh, still thinking about that, but if you've got any feedback on that, I would love to hear it. Uh, that said, though, let's get into some of the more, what I think are the more exciting news for the day. So first off, uh, we've got Dispay Paint coming in. We'll talk about there in the restock section. We got a lot more damage, uh, damage paint this time. As Orion put it, it looks like a xenomorph died in here. So apparently it was packed not far off from what it looks like now. This isn't like us dumping things in here in a mess. This is just a mess. Interestingly, the damage came from a box that was packed, we'll say not ideally. That one box uh, according to Dispay, came from one of their manufacturers and probably was not intended to be shipped internationally, uh, but ended up being shipped internationally. It was packed without their their boxes. Apparently, their whoever their partner is that that does the actual bottling or manufacturing doesn't uh, know how they send them internationally or how they pack them or something or forgot to or I, I don't know the details of it, but. Uh, Long story short, we open the box and there's just like broken bottles. There's no no boxes of individual boxes of paint, any of that kind of stuff. But the uh, the new containers, the new boxing method actually seems to be better. They've got a new foam encasement to the, uh, the plastic boxes that they use. And uh, we had a few leaks, but no broken bottles if you only factor in those, those containers, which is awesome. Uh, and so we actually, earlier this week, did a bit of a test. I packed the paint four different ways and kind of stress tested the uh, the boxes to see which ones protected the paint the best. I went a little overboard. Some of that probably you'll see right now. So that's, uh, that's a sneak peek. We have a whole video planned for next Tuesday where we're gonna show kind of that whole whole testing process. Uh, I think it, it was fun. Not the most scientific test in the world, but uh, kind of a confidence booster in, in a way on that how we pack them will, will work, I think. The other exciting news, and I'll touch on this again hopefully next week or the week after when they finally come in, uh, but we're getting some prize support from Bluefin for the repaired contest. I think they're sending me like 10 kits. I need to figure out what we're going to use those kits for, whether we're going to come up with some 
extra special prizes for, you know, special, like, um, what's the word? Superlatives, that's the word. Like, you know, best this, best that kind of thing. Or if we, you know, add up a fourth place prize or a popular vote prize for that initial um, voting section. I got to think about that a bit, but they're sending a bunch of stuff and some decent kits in that, that pile. So when we get them all in and I can show them, I will, uh, I will do that in a week or two. So thanks Bluefin, by the way. And uh, I guess the, uh, the final piece of this for week in review is just the, the past week, my head's been spinning. It's been a lot of stuff going on absolute chaos tons of stuff I, I'm more or less in control for the moment but I, I definitely feel absolutely buried so uh, I've made the decision to hire uh, again I'm gonna hire somebody probably a customer service person I'm working on the job description as we speak the listing might be listed sometime before or after this video is posted hopefully by next week and I'll be able to go in depth into what we're looking for for that position it will likely be a full-time position which is exciting, hiring our first our first uh, full-time hire. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to that. So, so keep an eye out for that in the, the near future, especially if you or someone you know might be, might be interested in doing customer service for a uh, Gumpla business. And we'll be talking about that soon. Okay, with that said, let's, uh, let's move on to pre-orders. So we posted four new pre-orders uh, this week. The, uh, we have a new frame arms and a new Metarot or Metabot. I think apparently they're both technically correct uh, based on the translation. A, uh, an MSG, so model support goods, set of samurai swords, all three of those from Kotobukiya. And then also the Artifact Series 2 or Volume 2. I'm not sure what the, the exact terminology is on that. We're still waiting for the Volume 1 to arrive. I think they're due to arrive any day now there I think there's supposed to be an August delivery or an August production I'm not sure everything's been delayed um, but those should be coming in in uh, or those pre-orders are up artifact series one should be coming in soon they're basically little like miniatures of some of the the Gundam Gundams that we know and love they're they're not colored so you'd have to paint them if you want them to be colored but they're pretty cool uh, from what I've seen, they seem like a good amount of detail and like a lot of parts for such a little, little thing. Uh, but if you're into painting minis, this is probably something that's right up your alley. And uh, I'm really looking forward to getting some of the series ones in so I can play with them myself. And uh, yeah, those those will definitely be cool. So with that uh, with that behind us, let's talk about restocks. Restocks are interesting this week. There were a few items that I'd expected to come in that are still stuck. I think they're in New York somewhere. They were supposed to arrive on Monday. We had a whole set of pallets that were supposed to arrive. Mostly one kit, actually. It'll be interesting to talk about next week. But uh, they're not here yet. And uh, if they're not here right now, and I don't think they're out for delivery today, so they're not going to restock this week. But what we do got is really interesting. So first off, we've got the, the Dispay paint. We talked about Dispay paint before. This is a restock. They're uh, another lacquer paint, and they're they're supposed to be pretty good. A lot of people seem to be uh, buying them up and uh, using them. I haven't seen a ton done with them, but I, I think they're supposed to be a pretty good line of paint. My only gripe has been packing, which is mostly fixed now. So with that in mind, uh, if you're into different kinds of paint, worth checking out. They also have their new uh, the new display markers. So they come in these little boxes. We've got I think. 11 colors so far they're they're on par with the Gundam markers in terms of price I think the uh, the marker tip might be different from what I understand but uh, if you're into using markers they might be might be interesting and worth checking out they're all sold individually there's some metallic ones I like metallic markers for for detail work so might be worth checking out in terms of kits kits and other things. So let's start, uh, I guess we'll start here. So we got uh, two things that I think are technically from Sentinel, is the name of the company. And, uh, but I'm not even sure it's supposed to be the English word. Although I can't even really tell on this particular kit if Sentinel is just the actual manufacturer or if they're an importer or how that works. But they came through Bluefin, so 
I'd assumed originally that it was, these were, were a Bandai kit. They are not. Uh, Orion actually snagged one as a pre-order and uh, he built it this week. He said it was a nice little build. It's a really small, but uh, might be worth checking out. It's a pretty cool looking, uh, it's a pretty cool looking design. And uh, it's at the very least interesting, especially if you want to build something that might not be technically a Gundam. We also have a this Mechatro We Go, I think it's the 80, number 35 or something. It's a, it's a figure. For some reason I thought this was going to be a kit when I ordered it. I probably wouldn't have ordered it knowing that it was a figure because we're trying to kind of avoid figures for the time being. But if you're into the Mechatro We Go designs, you know, give it a try, grab one. And uh, if that's the kind of thing that you'd like, I'd love to hear about it if you want figures to be in the store because it's something that we probably will expand into at some point. I just don't know when. Uh, as far as kits, we've got uh, a few different things here. Let's start with uh, Bandai. We've got some 30-minute missions, arm unit, rifle, large claw, accessory packs. 30-minute missions weapons are great for kit bashes. Work with your high grades, no problem. We also got system bases in. These will probably fly. They're, uh, they've been really popular. They're really cool and a great way to display your favorite kits. And I think they should work with high grades uh, or potentially master grades, especially if it's a smaller master grade. Uh, we also got some of these back in stock. This is the uh, HGUC number 234, Charizaku 2. And uh, I think it's supposed to be a pretty good kit. It's a recent, recent Zaku if you're into Zaku's and it's been done recently. We also got some uh, Kotobukiya in. And then I'll go back to the other band Bandai stuff. Governor Parapon Latin Mirror. This one is new to Mecha Warehouse. Don't know much about it. Kind of interesting. Looks like it's got some sort of bunny mask that it can wear. That's kind of cool. And uh, as well as restocking the uh, Governor Light Armor Type Rose as well. So we got those. We also got a restock of the Bullet Knights Launcher. So if you're into Megami devices, that one's cool. And we also got a Frame Arms Girl uh, Resvilgar. Her Resvilgar Aider. I don't, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. But we got these in as well. Uh, and then finally, we got a handful of Dragon Ball Z kits in. These don't usually sell super fast, but some people are into them, and so we got them back in stock again. Super Saiyan Vegito, Super Saiyan 2 Son Gohan, Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Goku. I don't know where they come up with these names. Uh, Super Saiyan... Three Son Goku. So that's Goku pretending to be a hedgehog. I'm just joking. Dragon Ball Z was cool. I was in Dragon Ball Z. Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Vegeta. So if you're into those uh, figure kits, we've got them in stock, worth checking out. And uh, yeah, that's it for restocks this week. So let's move on to q and I've got uh, three questions, I think, today. First one from Commander Wolf Hadley. Uh, great video questions answered. Woo, look forward to seeing it. So for the shirts, here's an idea with pre-orders for the limited run. Q&A. Have you thought about doing shirts from something like Teespring where once you have your limited run, those shirts could be ordered custom, colors, more sizes. You don't have to have spaces for the shirts. They come straight from there. I'm not sure if you would have to change prices, but something that might make some ordering for those easier to deal with. You make it tired of my questions. Not tired of your questions. I really appreciate your consistent questions. So I've thought about it. Our, uh, in fact, when we first did t-shirts, that's basically how we did it. Our supplier, uh, Printful, is where we get our shirts from. They do a pretty good job making the shirts and they allow us to basically drop ship t-shirts. And that's how we started. I realized though, after uh, we started expanding, we're growing, we, we don't charge sales tax. New Hampshire has no sales tax. And as far as I'm concerned, New Hampshire, we're doing business in New Hampshire. Other states might have different opinions. And basically the way the, the laws are worded on it, you, if for a state to, 
require you to charge sales tax for that state, you need to have a quote nexus in that state. And that basically means a physical operation there. Some states I think have tried to define that as selling there. Uh, that's bogus and according to the state of New Hampshire, I don't need to worry about it. So I'm not gonna worry about it. But by using an operation that might print and have a a location in that spot and having them ship directly, I think it could be construed as us having a nexus in that state. And they will, when we were doing that, they would start charging us sales tax for items sold and shipped to those states. So we stopped that because one, I don't wanna charge my customer sales tax because we don't have sales tax here and uh, I don't wanna pay sales tax and it was just it was a kind of a headache all around. So rather than have to deal with that, we're just doing things from here. I think the limited runs will give people a little bit of uh, impetus to jump on that and uh, and get that done if they want one, and it will give make a little bit of excitement knowing that you've got a shirt that maybe isn't going to be printed again. I guess. Let's see. Okay, next question. Rob Rosencrans, Nick, once your logo mecca is finally complete, top to bottom, would you ever consider and have it made in an actual kit? And if possible, would it be available for pre-order, et cetera, adding more to the P Mecca warehouse line? So uh, absolutely, the game plan is to do it someday. I've, I've talked about this once or twice before. The, the biggest thing, just talking in round numbers from what I've looked at, the cost to make a mold, just one mold for one runner, might cost somewhere in the ten dollars to $20,000 range, which means I have to sell a shit ton I, say, I don't even know if I say that word in this, but I gotta sell a ton of those uh, those kits. If it's a one runner kit, if it costs me 20,000 just for the mold, not including the cost to actually use that mold and make those, those runners. If it's a one runner kit, that's a lot of money to recoup. I have to sell a ton of those. It was gonna be a kit with two or three runners. Now we're talking about a ton of money. So I, would, I wanna do it. We are nowhere near, near that scale yet. Someday we will be. And when we get there, we will we will do that. I just don't know if that will be two years from now, 20 years from now, you know, six months from now, probably not six months, but I don't know when we'll be there, but I would love to do it. And then the last question for today is from Das McCharles. Any plans of working with Gun Primer to create a custom Razor Plus with some new Mecca Warehouse artwork? Uh, currently no plans, but that's a cool idea. I think I've heard of them doing kind of custom limited editions with some of their their other partners or or what have you. And uh, I'll have to look into that at some point and maybe ask them what kind of volume we need in order to do that. Uh, but that's pretty cool. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I have for today. Why do I always forget this? Uh, for the Q&A, if you have a question that you would like answered next week, Please, please, please post it down in the comments below. I'd love to answer your questions about Mecca Warehouse, uh, about myself, about business, about Gunpla, whatever it is that you, you want to ask. Please post a comment down below, and I'll try to answer it next week. Catch you all next week. Have a good one.